quick fix in the shop. This is Boxy Brown, my large format belt printer. And I realized that I'm connecting power directly to the power supply with no fuse. So, what's the best way to add a fuse to your 3D printer? Now you notice, power is feeding the Duet Mini 5. Got a 10 amp fuse for all of the motors, 15 amp fuse for the bed. Duet recommends that you have a 5 amp fuse in line for your Duet tool board. There are no fuses on the board itself. Macro camera, yeah. So if you see the power in, there's a few resistors, but no fuse to speak of. My favorite day to add a fuse, these little automotive fuse holders. I'm gonna set the camera up for a wide angle shot, but we're mostly gonna be looking up at the details. Can you guys stay? Nice. So I use these on 3D printer build groups with folks who, you know, Natty, stop it. Folks who weren't great at building stuff. And the biggest problem we had was they couldn't figure out what was going on with this wire. They're made this way, nice and cheap. In order to install it, you have your fuse getting in there and you cut the wire to wire it up in line. I'm actually gonna cut the wire twice because I don't want it quite this long. But you could just cut it once. Bob's your uncle. This is quite a nice tool. Amazon, cheap, works really well. Second big question of fuses is, which one do you put in? It'll tell you your number at the top. This is a 25 amp fuse. You see how thick that center wire is? That is what will break and melt if you put too much current through it. In this case, I cheated a little. I looked at the documentation and the duet would like a five amp fuse, which I was gonna tell you was red, but that's 30. Five. A little worried there. The five amp fuse. You can see the wire in the five amp is a good bit thinner. We're gonna install him. Hmm. This is as old as Marine. I just like having the cap, so it's you know, out of sight, out of mind. In order to install this on the printer, we're gonna cut the printer just the same way. And use our heat gun with some cool connectors. Blanking on what these are actually called. But you have heat shrink tubing with a little adhesive band and a chunk of low temperature solder. So if I were to stick that on like so, it'll shrink down on the wire. And I can use that to attach the other. Now, do you fuse the positive wire or the homemade negative wire? The guy with a stripe is negative. It actually does not make a difference. So I am going to fuse the positive wire. My dad has always told me to fuse the positive wire. And I believe that advice comes from automotive. And that makes sense in automotive because the ground wire, the negative lead, is attached to the frame of the vehicle many points. Framing. Not very good at this. One-handed business. But we're getting there. Focus. Focus. Nice. That's good work. Lay the ends of these together, sort of jam and twist. Come on, I don't even want to focus on it. Do it. That is one good connection. Other thing is, these need to be held for a bit until the solder cools down. Put a lot of heat in. It takes it a minute to go full solid. I just felt like the GoPro felt left out. So you can see there's no movement on the joint. I'm gonna do the same thing the other end. Hopefully the focus a little bit better. Good to go. 
And the heat shrink, of course, help it to squeeze the solder into the gaps. And that is the quickest way to add a fuse in. I am going to mount the fuse and verify that it works, but still got sync, still got power, doing good. One thing, anytime you're running a solder joint, you should put a multimeter on either end and make sure you have good conductivity so that you're not, you haven't added any resistance to the system. If you have a bad solder joint, it might come as uh, enough power to light it up, but cause problems with arcing or something down the line. But happy printing. Thanks for watching.